This car is ready to be unloaded. We have chalked the car here. We have a derailleur and we've got blue flags. Before the process starts, you want to make sure you've got your ground hooked up uh, in case there might be a spark, uh, static electricity that could uh, create a spark. Also, the rails are grounded so that uh, if lightning struck the track at any time, it can't find its way up here while you're unloading the ethanol. First step you would do would be to go up on top, open up the hatch. We're going to go ahead and cut the seals on the car on the top, uh, verifying that it has not been through with between here and uh, origin. And then we will open the lid on the car and get ready to ventilate through that part of the car. Release the release valve. There's always pressure on these cars when they come in. So you slowly release the hatch, uh, release the release, air release valve to bleed off any, any pressure or air that's built up in the car. And then at that point, you would take your wrench and in a star pattern, open up the, uh, the hatch, the manhole hatch on the car. But you want to open them and loosen them in an opposite pattern so that if there is any pressure or anything, it'll release. Those nuts are always supposed to be come to us with what they call tool tight. Sometimes it takes a big tool to get them loose. All right, then you, once you get all that done, you open the hatch, um, you take your measuring stick and, and read the readings on the car. It is important to know that about what the car should be and what the car is to make sure that no product might have leaked on the way down. Uh, once you get your readings and you send your stick back down, you want to take your sampler, take a sample of the car, pass it back down so that the sample can be harvested and taken uh, care of. We keep samples for about two weeks, make sure that each sample bottle is labeled properly. Got to seal the bottle with the little plastic seal. And then it's got a kind of like a milk jug latch on the top there. Then uh, you take a two by four or a non-metallic item, put into the hatch cover so the air can uh, replace the product as it is being pumped out. Then that's all you got to do on the top. Then when you get to the bottom of the car, if you notice the cap there that has been taken off, that cap will be on the car when it comes in. If you'll notice on this car, they have added in the fact that it's got the closed and the open. Now that seems simple enough, but uh, until you unscrew that bottom cap, you don't know if it's open or closed. So it's very helpful to have it on the side of the car. And I haven't really noticed how many of them have it, but there's, we've run into at least three different types of opening and closed devices and setups on the cars, even some of them have them up on top. You have to go up on top to open the car. So they all seem to be different, but it's very helpful to know when the car comes in and be assured that it is closed. You want to verify that the handle is in the closed and locked position because if it was to be open and you unscrew this, you would, you would empty the car right here on top of us. We're going to unscrew this cap. Uh, we're using a 24 inch pipe wrench and going to try to unscrew it here. Sometimes these will unscrew, but this is the cap we're shooting for. If this won't get it, we've got a 48 inch pipe wrench to unscrew this cap. And this is one of those that's gonna take the big wrench. All right, usually once you get them broke, But as you're unscrewing, you want to be watching for any product around those threads to ensure that it's not leaking in any way. And there's a little bit of product in the cap. Now, then you'll turn and screw this piece on. It's important that you have the seal in this load head so that it can't, product can't leak out around. If you, if you inadvertently put it on there without that seal or having that seal in there straight, you're gonna have a leak. You always wanna make sure that you got the gasket in there to seal that thing properly.
All right, and then there's a specially made tool right over there. Obviously, if you use the pipe wrenches on this piece, it's not going to go. Pipe wrenches will eat that up. That little fella does a good job of, of taking care of your stuff. That'll tighten that part up so that you don't have any leaks there. Now you want to pop the little cover off there. Now, this has got a valve in it, so it's, the car would be closed even if for some reason you opened it. All right, and then you hook the hose up. You gotta make sure that when you hook the hose up, you notice that little knob there on the bottom. It, it's what connects the hose to the car device. Make sure that's locked up. Now, if for some reason it did not fit properly, it will not release the valve inside of there. And then you've got all that hooked up and make sure it's good and tight. You want to come and uh, break the seal on the handle. If the car comes in sealed, so we've broken the seal. And it's also got a little pin in it here to make sure that nothing happens in transit. And you can hear the product whenever you put it into the pipe. And then we'll come over here and then we're gonna open the hose to let the product go from the flex hose headed toward the tanks. Make sure your pump is on at the tanks and that will carry the product up and into the tank. This car has finished out, so we're going to go ahead and close the valve. Now it's important to know that even though we're pumping out of cars that are below us, no product can come back through because all these valves are one-way valves. And then we will move up and close the car. It has got the same little latch pin on it. And we'll pull it out. and close the car up. Now, we will unhook the car. Pull in the hose out of the way to make sure it's not a trip hazard. Once you've pulled the hose loose, you take, your, take the wrench again, pop it loose, okay? And then you just unscrew that. Again, making sure you keep an eye on your gasket. And then we will put the cover back on the car. Go ahead, Travis. And you usually put just a little bit of wrench on it to ensure that everything's good and tight. All right, now we're going to uh, seal the car back up on the top. We'll start by removing the two by four and uh, tightening the bolts back down. Again, we'll want to do that in a star pattern. And these don't need to be super tight, but just tool tight will be sufficient. You want to always be sure to have your safety glasses on when fooling with that, you never know. We do have an eye wash station, but you really don't want to test that out. Travis is going to raise the lid and make sure the valve is closed. Make sure everything is prepared to return the car back to the origin. You want to seal the car even though it's empty to make sure that there's no tampering. No other product might could be added to the car or if there was just a little bit of product left in the car, nobody could harvest that. And then once you've closed up the bottom of the car and you close up the top of the car, you want to rem remove the ground cable and uh, go ahead and properly spin it up and store it away. But as you're looking at the car, you want to notice to see if you see any defects in the wheels or anything about the, uh, the undercarriage of the car, anything you'd need to report to the railroad that, uh, that is a defect because it would, be, it would be hazardous if something happened to one of these cars.